Bora, how do you see the telco operator of today having to change and evolve their business models to be able to compete in a very difficult market that we find ourselves in today? Thanks for the question, Pramish. I think um, it's interesting because telecommunications and now overreaching digital uh, environment that it serves to has been evolving quite drastically over particularly over the last two decades. And we have seen communication service providers coming from traditional voice and messaging focused business models to the telcos of today, which are not necessarily just focusing on one or two products, but offering quite a wide range of uh, digital services. Now, going forward, I think the implications of this is going to be even more drastic because we have seen, particularly over the past decade, the introduction and uh, uh, kind of dominance of really innovative services from the over the top players. And this includes, you know, voice and messaging to start with, which made, you know, this kind of services really commoditized today. And we have also seen them getting into, you know, other core revenue sources of the traditional uh, telcos and communication service providers, as I refer to it today. Th that's an, is, there's an interesting nuance that I've picked up because it would appear that, you know, originally we referred to telco operators and mobile network operators, then it kind of evolved to telco operators. And now we, we're actually going to the space of calling them communication service providers. And for me, that nuance is actually interesting because it talks to the evolving nature of these businesses. So from being capital intensive infrastructure heavy businesses, it seems to be focused or growing in focus in terms of more service type businesses and service type offerings. Junita, maybe it's, it's appropriate for you to come in at this time to talk to us about the evolving nature of the infrastructure landscape for these operators to be successful. Uh, yes, certainly, Premish, and it's it's really interesting time to be in the telecommunication space, um, as we are seeing, um, you know, how the lines are starting to blur between a traditional mobile network operator um, and your wireless traditional wireless operators, and now certainly the fixed line uh, infrastructure providers. Um, and I think what's interesting for um, for the for the market certainly um, is, uh, and it's and it's evident by the M&A activity that 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 we are witnessing. Uh, right now is just how reliant the communication, you know, wireless communication certainly has become on infrastructure um, and vice versa. Um, and we are seeing that um, the infrastructure, the fixed line infrastructure providers um, are now looking at building towers um, and they are considering themselves to be a turnkey infrastructure providers. Um, whether that is a, a wireless component or a fixed line component, um, they're certainly making uh, substantial investments in all aspects of uh, infrastructure provision. What we're seeing quite clearly is a blurring of the lines between the different players in the industry. So what we would have seen as a mobile network operator providing voice and data services and also owning the infrastructure is now actually evolving into a digitally led services business. And I think my personal view is that is probably going to define the evolution of the winners and the losers. I think one of the challenges is for what we term now as the telco operators, not to become utility type businesses. What would your views be on that? Well, permission, I guess this is really a defining question for most of the communication service providers of today. Because as I mentioned, I mean, their traditional revenues have been eroding quite heavily through OTTs and they are trying to find new revenue sources through digital services, including, you know, on the enterprise space, really focusing on IT and cloud offerings. On uh, consumer space, we have seen some of these communication service providers going into video, music and entertainment type of services. And uh, in your sector also, I mean, we have seen quite a lot of mobile money or uh, 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 digital finance type of offerings and insurance uh, type of offerings uh, led by the uh, communication service providers. So obviously there's a, you know, soul search a bit uh, within the communication service provider environment in terms of how they will evolve their businesses through probably partnership with other key players in the uh, 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 both from a uh, for IR industry, uh, fourth industrial revolution point of view, in terms of how do they make use of this 
digital development, both uh, enterprise and consumer space point of view. But at the same time, I mean, they have the challenge of still uh, supporting all these services with a uh, infrastructure, which is very capital intensive. And obviously, on the, under the light of eroding revenues, it is not an easy thing to deal with because on one hand you are earning less or your margins are getting tighter. On the other hand, you constantly need to spend more and more on the infrastructure. Now, what is naturally happening though is the, within past decade in particular, we have seen this independent infrastructure operators, um, owners and operators who are kind of taking the ownership of this uh, infrastructures, let it be towers, fiber, data center, we have seen on all core assets, and they are uh, leveraging the being an independent player, uh, economy of scale, serving to multiple communication service providers, hence bringing the cost of capital investment down or more shared uh, between different players. Now, this is uh, this is started with focused asset. We have seen the emergence of tower cost in Africa within the last 10 years in particular. In uh, 2009, almost none of the towers were managed by tower cost. Today, more than 60% of the towers of, on the continent are managed by this tower cost. We have seen it from a uh, fiber point of view, independent players. We have seen many uh, new uh, entrants over there, all the way from Pan-African players like Liquid Telecom to uh, DFAs of South Africa. And we have seen also uh, carrier neutral data centers like Terracos and all making strides in it. And we have seen quite a large investment and interest in this kind of assets. And globally also we have seen lots of uh, really underlying real estate companies taking this data center uh, play to a new level like uh, Equinixes or Digital Realties who are investing in uh, underlying real estate aspect of it over which then your uh, both communication service providers and OTTs are uh, taking services. Now, going forward, what is interesting is the dynamic within this infrastructure space as well, because as the service and infrastructure is kind of uh, segregated, uh, there is a need for infrastructure players to constantly reduce their costs as well. And on, the, on that note, I mean, they are looking for ways to optimize their, you know, obviously cost structure, and it is not easy to find those synergies within the same asset. So we, therefore, I mean, uh, on, on the other hand, communication service providers are looking for more end-to-end -end type of services. So uh, this leads to cross-asset consolidation within the infrastructure space as well. And as we speak, there are lots of uh, uh, transactions happening or con being considered uh, between different asset owners, uh, let it be data center owners, uh, fiber owners or tower owners. They are each looking over the fence, what's on the other side and how they can bring this closer together. So uh, both on the infrastructure space, uh, I would predict to uh, get more consolidation and more M&A going on or more uh, closer cooperation between these players. Okay, can I maybe just pause you there because it looks like there's a clear move I guess in in, in a number of different aspects. The, the first is a, a clear focus on, on capital efficiency and therefore the move towards outsourcing a, a part of the business that does not enhance uh, a necessarily its ability to, to compete in the market. Um, so moving to a more efficient type business model where the CapEx intensive part of the business is actually outsourced, which then allows the, the, the telco to be competitive in the services element of, the, uh, of, 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 of its product and services. So do you think that there's now the structural change in the industry is something that is going to be disruptive in a certain in a certain respect. You've mentioned that we're now seeing cross asset consolidation. So towercos investing in fiber, potentially in data centers. What is the what is the new level of telco infra company going to look like? Junita, do you want to comment on that? Mm. Um, I think we'll we'll certainly um, see. Uh, two types of uh, telecommunication providers. Um, firstly, 
the uh, asset owners, uh, which will uh, own the infrastructure, and that will be the fixed line, uh, as well as the tower, or if we look towards 5G, the antenna certainly, um, and including the data centers. And then I think we'll see uh, MNOs move into a space where they, you know, they capitalize on the amount of data that uh, technology such as 5G will enable. And I think that they will look at intelligent ways of, uh, of what they can do with that data, and of course to provide, um, you know, the applications. Um, it's always been a bit of a chicken and an egg situation because, you know, there's, um, we want to launch the data intensive applications, but we haven't got the infrastructure and, you know, and, and the infrastructure uh, companies have been uh, nervous to invest uh, substantially in the infrastructure in case, you know, we, we don't fill the pipes. Um, but I think that, you know, we've crossed that now. And I think that there's a, there's a, a, a segment in the market now uh, where uh, companies have, uh, reinvented themselves and I think they understand where they want to go and what they want to achieve um, and um, it's, it's very exciting. So the, the way I think about the industry is that there's perhaps three levels. The, the base level is infrastructure, the second is then in terms of the radio access network and it's arguable whether that is actually a subset of infrastructure or not, and we'll talk about that just now. And then the third level is in terms of in terms of services and the evolution of the services. So I think we've covered the infrastructure part of it, and I think clearly the theme that we're seeing is consolidation amongst infrastructure providers in the same theme, but then also, as Bora pointed out, uh, cross-asset consolidation. And I think that's going to be an ever-evolving space.